beat with that same sample that we were just listening to. So I got the idea to just to chop it like some old school DJ shit back in the day. I used to chop up the records like da 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 Now it's effects, it's stutter effects. So I'm trying to get used to doing this YouTube shit. I want to share a story about how I started making beats. How I started making, how I accidentally started making sample beats. I grew up in North Oakland around a few people, producers that made beats. My boy Bobby Drake and it back then known as EB, the Lyrical Storm. Uh, we were hustling, trying to get equipment and shit. We didn't have none. He had a little bit of equipment, but he always was borrowing equipment from a close friend he had. I forgot his name, I forgot his name. But uh, some kind of way they let me borrow the equipment. I think it was like an Insonix EPS or something like that. It had a certain amount of sample memory per, per track. Uh, he would act funny with giving me all the stuff that it came with. He would just give me the uh, the keyboard. He wouldn't give me the disc. Would have the instruments and nothing like that. And I would call him every five ten minutes. Hey, how you do this? How you do that? How you do this? How you, how you do this? And he would act funny because he was working. And me being young, I didn't know how to, what to think of it. I thought he was just acting funny. I'm still thinking he acting funny to this day. But uh, I matured or whatever. But long story short, I had to start sampling each instrument. Every instrument I had to sample from the kick to the snare to old hi-hats to everything so I would go back it was no YouTube it was no Facebook and no social network or nothing like that barely was even computers everything was just hardware and uh, it was a it was a challenge trying to find the instruments to make an actual beat but it was actual fun because I was young so I would uh go through records since I was a DJ and started as a DJ and uh, I think that gave me gave me a lot of game and tempo so I knew the tempo of things so I uh, I went I would sample the kick the snare and everything and then I'd play around with the keys but what was crazy about it is we didn't have no disc to save everything. So when we, when I would make a beat, when I would, I would, I would say I would have it on all day. I would have the keyboard on all day. Probably make about five or six beats, and uh, we had to record them on tape. There was no CD players. We had to record them on tape. And after we recorded them on tape and turned off the equipment, it was a wrap. No more beats saved. Nothing, nothing to save on. I was so young, I didn't even think to go buy, go to the uh, guitar center or anything like that and buy a uh, floppy disk because everything was on floppy disk back then. Living you learn. Ooh, 
Saturday, I gotta clean this tape. Where the hell is the keys? That's the wrong damn key, bro, ham. The hell you want? You tweaking? You tweaking? Yeah. You tweaking. discussed that the first piece of equipment that I ever made uh, beats on was a Insonix EPS. And I think the dude name was Kirk. I'm not too sure. I will have to ask my boy Bobby. Hey! So after I started making the beats, I would put them on tape and I would ride around with everybody I knew that had cars. And most of the people in the neighborhood that had money, that the D-boys that was getting money in the neighborhood all through the 50s, they would pick me up in their cars. I was excited, enthusiastic about the beats. So I would be like, but you gotta hear these new beats. And I was with my boy Norm. He was more popular than me. He knew everybody in the hood. So I'm with him. I'm with him, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm riding with him. They jump, I jump in the car with him, put the tape in, we slapping hard, nigga. We going everywhere, nigga. And of course, I thought I was the best producer in the world. I didn't give a fuck about nobody. Of course, I had influences that was out, but I didn't care, I didn't care about much. I, if it wasn't industry music, and of course, I grew up listening to East Coast hip hop. I was listening to majority of East Coast hip hop, but when I started producing, my sound had a, it was a sample sound, but it was a grimy, West Coast, dark, you know what I'm saying? It was uh, it was a little bit melodic. I had I was had had melody, had melodies and shit. I had this one. Um, I remember my first. It was like dun 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 dun, dun, dun tales from the north side. I would sample my boy Norm on the microphone inside the e EPS, and it was him saying to to tales from the north side. And we had another one called uh, Buck 'em in the stomach with the four five. Buck him in the stomach with the 4-5. Tales from the north side. Borrowing their equipment. 
And the dude, I was so young, I ain't gonna lie. I thought about robbing him a few times. I ain't gonna lie, me being young, I thought about robbing him a few times. I uh, I would even, even try to provoke him to get mad so I can go through with it. I think we was even, I think we even rolled by his house or something. We was either, I don't know, we was crazy back then. We would, we would think of some shit because we just wanted to have equipment. Riding by his house, trying to find him, trying to see if we see him leaking outside, walking outside. If we ever seen him outside, it probably would have been cookies for him. I'm, I am sorry. I, I don't, I don't wish nothing bad on him or nothing, but we probably would have robbed him back in the day and end up keeping that equipment. I know he eventually came back and, and, and got it. That's what made us want to rob him. Because we was like, fuck that. We want to make some beats. We want to get some floppy disks now. I got the idea to get the floppy disk and shit. Hella late after the equipment gone. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Style stayed with me, and I ain't gonna lie. Without well, about my producer Will, he really influenced me. Will, Will Edwards, and uh, E. B. Bobby Drake, uh, Eric Berry. Yeah, them niggas, them niggas inspired me to really go hard and eventually start rapping and shit too. But I just went hard on the producing back then. Of course, I was making a lot of trash. Back in the early, early times, I was making slap with that EPS, but as time progressed and shit, I ended up getting equipment, and some beats was trash, some beats was good, a lot of, a lot of shit was trash, but I kept doing that shit since the 90s and shit, never quit, now it's 2020, 2020 nigga, so nigga can say I got over 25 years of experience with this shit. I'm happy we didn't rob him. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy as hell we didn't rob him. That shit would have been scam. Haven't already subscribed to my channel. So you two together, vibing and making beats together. That's combined knowledge. His knowledge and your knowledge together, especially if you sharing stuff that you know and he sharing stuff that y'all know. That's combined knowledge. So that shit helps. Shout out to that nigga.